Now, are you willing to travel to the to Japan yeah, to make that fight happen? Uh, yeah, all action, all the smoke. Yeah, I don't care. I like it. Yo, what's good, everyone? This is AO Box with Madiba, and we're here to talk about Iowa NUA and Stephen Fulton and negotiations to make a fight in Japan. So this is new information that just came out today while I was at work, and it got me excited. So let's get into it. So the boxing scene stated that a deal has been reached for a Stephen Fulton Iowa NUA championship fight. Fulton will defend his unified WBC WBO junior featherweight crown versus NUA, who recently vacated his undisputed bantamweight championships. The exact date and location are to be determined with a target time frame of later this spring, May or June in Japan. This doesn't mean the fight's 100% official yet, but everyone that was talking shit about Fulton saying that he was ducking and running from NUA, y'all are eating your words. Y'all gotta either apologize or delete some comments or do something. Because y'all were running with a narrative. Like, y'all were running with that shit. Like, running with it. But I can't be mad at y'all, though. Personally, I never thought that Fulton would duck NUA. Even with the news of the Brandon Figueroa rematch, in the video I did on it, I gave Fulton the benefit of the doubt that he would fight NUA. You have to realize that Fulton has taken several risks throughout his career. And his road to being a champion at 122 was never easy. He has beaten 9 undefeated fighters out of his 21 fights. And you don't really see that in boxing at all, so salute to him. But there were clues that pointed to Fulton fighting anyway next instead of a Figueroa rematch. On Twitter, Fulton and YSM Sports Media, a boxing channel based in Philly that you should go subscribe to, and shout out to him, had tweets from last week that alluded to an NUA fight. Like... It's going to be a hell of a spring. And what truly confirmed to me that an NUA fight was next was when news broke that Brandon Figueroa would be fighting Mark Masai on March for the interim WBC belt at Featherweight. And shortly after that, the news broke that NUA and Fulton were in negotiations. So, for the matchup itself, I see this fight as a 50-50 fight because NUA has never fought a fighter like Fulton, nor has Fulton ever fought a guy like NUA. I see this as anyway's boxing ability and power versus Fulton's boxing ability and versatility. I see a lot of anyway fans use the Figueroa fight as a reason why Fulton would get beat by anyway, but that makes no sense because anyway does not fight like Figueroa at all. And in that fight, it showed me that Fulton's versatile because Fulton is considered a slick boxer to most people, but in that fight, he fought on the inside against a bigger and stronger opponent and beat Figaro at his own game. And after that, he outboxed and dominated Daniel Roman. And these are both elite guys at 122. So this shows me that Fulton is capable and is comfortable fighting guys in different ways to get the win. And I've seen Fulton fans use the first O'Neill fight to give a reason why Fulton would outbox anyway, but once again, that makes no sense because, yeah, Donaire did have some success against anyway in the first fight, but we all saw what happened in the rematch, and there's no need for me to even go further with that. But this is not a full fight analysis. I'm going to save that for a later date, but just know there's going to be no fanboy narratives or fanboy talks on this channel. But to the winner and loser of this fight, I just hope the fans give them the full respect that they deserve because they're putting their legacies on the line and this is a fight that the boxing world wants and needs. So hopefully they can get this deal squared away so we know they'll be fighting later this year. But who knows, this is boxing, anything can happen. But thank you for tuning in with AO Boxing from Adiba. Hit like and subscribe and more content's coming your way.